Uh, this is what's happened to the unemployment rate. That's the red line. Uh, and what's happened to the stock market. That's the blue line. And in the view that I'm putting out in, in the book, How the Economy Works, um, you might ask me, am I a Keynesian or am I a classical economist? Well, I'm a little bit of both. I think that the notion that the economy can go wrong sometimes is fundamentally an important idea that comes out of Keynes. Uh, I, I think that for reasons that I don't have time to go into the lecture, that the important thing that happened in 2008 was a dramatic loss of wealth. The stock market crashed and housing wealth crashed both at the same time. And that simultaneous loss of wealth, so the stock, if you think about what wealth is, in the US, wealth is about three-fifths factories and machines, and it's about two-fifths houses. And when both of those things crash at the same time, as they did in 2008, and when the value of houses and machines stays down for a long period of time, as they are now, uh, that's devastating to households. Um, we've seen houses drop before without a drop in the stock market. We've seen a drop in the stock market before without a drop in houses. When both of them go down together, uh, bad things happen. That happened in 1929. It's happened again today. Uh, I'm going to skip that slide. Um, now, it's kind of interesting to ask where we're going and, and how it compares with what's been happened in the, happening in the past. This is the unemployment rate in the current crisis. The blue line is the unemployment rate in the worst post-war recession uh, other than the current crisis, and that was in, uh, in 1981. And the green line is the Great Depression. So it's clear from that picture that things are nowhere near as bad yet as they were in the Great Depression. Uh, however, they're not that good. Here's another picture that's useful to look at. It's, it's comparing job losses uh, in the last six recessions. So uh, st this was the 1974 recession. So uh, what's being graphed on the axis here is the percentage of people employed relative to the peak. So the peak is always 100%. So if you look at what happened in 74, uh, employment dropped by about 3%, came back up again within 15 months. If you look at 1980, that was just a very small recession, maybe 1 or 2% came back up again in about 7 months. If you look at the worst post-war recession other than the current one, that's the 1981 recession, there, uh, payroll employment dropped by about 3% from 100 to 97 over a period of about 15 months. These are months along here. It took another 15 months to recover. The current recession um, that began in 2007, December of 2007, uh, employment has, has dropped 6%. Still nothing like the Great Depression. But notice, if you were to kind of extend these little graphs forward, it looks a lot like it's going to be uh, another 25 months at least before we get back up to where we were, if we get back up. And the other possibility, of course, is that rather than go up like this, we're going to have a double dip and go down like that. And that is still a big possibility in my view. What's different about this recession from all the ones that preceded it, is that those policy uh, options that I told you about, that Keynes introduced, fiscal policy and monetary policy, are not working. And they're not working because, in my view, the, the most important piece that got us out of the post-war recessions before now was the Fed. And what the Fed did in every previous post-war recession is it lowered interest rates. So these gray bars are recessions. Uh, the blue line is the Treasury bill rate. The red line is the unemployment rate. And notice that in, in the 1990 recession, the interest rate drops from about 8.5% down to 
In the 2000 recession, it drops from about 5% down to 1.5%. Uh, and notice that in the current recession, it drops from 4% to 0 And what makes this recession different from anything else that's happened in the post-war period is that the Fed has run out of ammunition. So the way that the Fed goes out of recessions, uh, and this same pattern repeats back right through to the 1950s, is once the recession started, the Fed lowered the interest rate. By lowering the interest rate, that made investing in real machines and factories more attractive to people. Investors went out, consumers went out, people bought stuff. That got the economy started again. In 1929, the Fed lowered the interest rate. And by the early 1930s, we were in the same situation as we are now. The Fed ran out of ammunition. The interest rate had gone to zero in the early 1930s. It's down to zero now. So that, in my view, is what makes the current recession bigger and different from anything that's happened in the post-war period. Uh, what do we do about it? Uh, again, I'm already slightly running over time. So one, I told you that, that there were two themes in, in the book, How the Economy Works. One is a theme that I spent most of this lecture on, which is the history of ideas. The other is some new proposals to try and get us out of the current recession. And those are based on a philosophy that takes a lot from Keynes, but on some evidence that we've learned about uh, since World War II. And that evidence is that demand is a lot more sensitive to wealth than it is to income. And the proposals that I describe in much more detail in the book are, are proposals to try to uh, beef up the arsenal of the Fed to get them into a situation where they can deal with situations when interest rates are very low by keeping up the value of wealth. I'd be happy to talk more about that in questions, but um, uh, let me summarize. Uh, lots of stuff about dead economists. <laughs> wealth matters. Uh, monetary policy is important but ineffective, and we need some new ideas. And because I've, running, I've run out of time, I'm going to stop right there.